Uh, hello everyone, I'm Hui Ying. Today I'm going to present our work, Black Light, Scalable Defense for Neural Networks Against Quarry-Based Black Box Attack. This is the work from Sent Lab at the University of Chicago. Adversary examples are one of the most well-known attacks against deep neural networks. Researchers have found that imperceptible perturbations can fool DNN models to make wrong decisions. For example, if we add this well-crafted small perturbation on the stop sign image, the model will misclassify it to speed limit. According to threat models, we can divide adversarial attacks into white box attack and black box attack. In white box attack, the attacker has a full access to the model, including model weights and architectures, while in black box attack, we assume the attacker only has query access to the model. White box access is a super strong assumption because usually it is very hard for the attacker to breach the server and get the model. In the meanwhile, black box attack is more realistic. And in this work, we focus on black box attack. In query based black box attack, the attacker will send a sequence of well-crafted queries. They will use the queries as well as their results to approximate an iterative optimization to compute the adversarial perturbations. For each attack query xi, the attacker will craft it with previous queries as well as their results. So it is really important to detect the attack queries as early as possible because every single query gets answered is a progress in the attack. So how do we detect these attack queries? What do these attacks share in common? To build adversarial examples, the attacker must perform iterative optimization. And in black box scenario, iterative optimization means sending highly similar queries because the attacker needs to minimize the delta between the original query and the adversarial example. So the key commonality here is the presence of high similarity in the attack queries. Here is an example of two attack sequences generated by different attack designs, grading-based and grading-free. We can see that in both attack sequences, these attack queries are highly similar to each other in pixel level. Usually, benign users won't send these pixel level highly similar queries. So this could be a way for us to detect these attack queries. There's only one existing defense against query-based black box attack, which is an account-based detection method from AISAC. It marks each query with the account sending them and detect the attacking account. However, it is easy to bypass using multiple Siebel accounts. In this work, we propose a query-based detection with no account information. We detect all attack queries, even they are sent across multiple accounts. And the challenge here is how do we do a scalable detection to millions of queries? Ideally, for each query, we want the detection runtime to be near constant, no matter how many previous queries we want to compare with. There are several intuitive ways to do query similarity comparison. For example, of course, we can compare the input space LP distance between the current query and all previous queries. Or instead of looking to the input space distance, we could look into latent feature uh, distance. However, both of the methods have a runtime of big O of n, where n is the number of previous queries, and they are not scalable. So we need a new similar, similarity metric allowing fast comparison. The key enabler here is probabilistic fingerprinting, which is a temper-resistant fingerprinting method. It is a short bit string fingerprinting method. By saving each short bit in the fingerprint to a hash table, we could do fingerprint matching in a constant time. It is also a secure fingerprinting method using one-way hashing, which makes reverse engineering attack computationally expensive. Let's see how it works. 
it will generate the fingerprint from the set of hashes of all subsegments of length L. If two inputs are highly similar, then their fingerprints will be highly similar. For example, we have an input array here and a window of length L. We will calculate a hash of the segment in this window. Then we will slide the window and keep doing this until we get the hashes of all the subsegments. Then we will do a randomized sampling to get the fingerprint. For example, we could select the top H hashes by doing a numerical sorting of all the hash values. Probabilistic fingerprinting is temper resistant. It is deterministic and repeatable for the same query, yet it is unpredictable and randomized to an attacker. With this in mind, let's take a look at the overview for Blacklight. The core idea here is to detect similar attack queries by comparing their probabilistic fingerprints. A query is malicious if its fingerprint is similar to some prior fingerprints we can store in a database. For example, we have a fingerprint database here, and when queries come, we will calculate the fingerprint and save it to the database. At the same time, if we find a similar fingerprint in the database, we will tag this query as an attack query and reject it without sending any outputs from the model. In our system design, for each incoming query, we will first pre-process it. We will convert the image to a bucketized pixel array. Then we will compute the probabilistic fingerprint of it, compare and match the current fingerprint with prior fingerprints. And if we detect an attack query, we will reject it as the mitigation method. For more details about our system design, please look into our paper. We evaluate Blacklight on four different image classification tasks using eight state-of-art attacks with four different mat metrics. We have three metrics for detection and one metric for mitigation. For detection, we, ha we have attack detection rate, which is the rate uh, which is the proportion of attack sequences we detect. Detection coverage is the proportion of attack queries, queries in the attack sequence we detect. Average queries to detection is the number of attack queries get answered before we detect the attack sequence. And for mitigation, we have attack success rate with mitigation, which is the attack success rate of a persistent attack whose, where all the detected attack queries are rejected. We run 1,000 attack sequences per attack algorithm per task, and we allow the maximum query numbers for each attack sequence to be 100K. I'm gonna show the result uh, average over all tasks, and for the detailed numbers for each task, you can look into our paper. For detection, we can see that Blacklight can detect all attack sequences for all the attack algorithms over all tasks. And the detection coverage is very high, which means Blacklight can detect most of attack queries. Besides, Blacklight can detect most of the attack sequences in two to eight queries. This is great, especially given that most of the attack succeed in tens of thousands of queries. And most importantly, no attack sequence succeed with blacklight mitigation. We also show that blacklight is effective against query-based adversarial patch attacks. We can also generalize blacklight to other domains. We illustrate how to generalize blacklight using text classification tasks. And we also show that Blacklight is effective against different countermeasures, like reducing query similarity and reducing number of attack queries in each attack sequence. For more details, please look into our paper. Thanks for listening, and I'm happy to take questions.